It's summertime, and what that means for a lot of people who are about to be high school seniors is that you're starting to worry about your college applications, you're trying to figure out how to write your essays, you're trying to figure out what schools to apply to, you're trying to figure out what your major is going to be, and you're trying to figure out how to put together the best application that you possibly can so that the admissions committees at your dream schools will let you in. And now, given that I'm somebody that went through the college application process last year and ended up being, you know, somewhat successful, I ended up at one of my top choice schools and, you know, I ended up applying to 18 schools. So I'm pretty familiar with the college application process. I decided to make this video to give you some tips on how to navigate your way through the college application process as you go through your senior year, everything you're probably gonna to need to know and things that I wish I knew before I had gone through the college application process and things that I did um, that really helped me maintain my sanity and not go insane because of the amount of stress and anxiety that the process will inevitably create for you at some point in your life. So without further ado, let's get into figuring out how you can keep your sanity and not go insane while doing your college apps. If you end up liking the video, hit the like button, subscribe. It'll help me out a lot. It's up free and you can always unsubscribe later. Okay, so here's the first tip. Given that it's July already, July 2nd or 3rd, depending on when this video goes up, you probably already have a list of colleges that you want to apply to and you're gonna edit this list probably during the process. You might remove some schools or you might add some new schools, but given that you already have your schools listed down, what you should probably do is make a Notion document or a Google Drive folder and make documents for every single essay prompt from each of these schools. You can do this all in the same Google Doc by just making different headings for each school. So you could have your school essay prompts for UNC and then your essay prompts for NC State and then your essay prompts for Harvard all in the same document or you just make separate documents for each one. Doing this and having them organized like that so that every time you open up your Google Drive, you see them staring you right in the face, it'll keep you, remi it'll remind you that you should probably be working on your essays. Next, you should also make sure to figure out deadlines for each of these essays. And by deadlines, I don't necessarily mean the exact time that they're due for each call. So like if the essays in your application is due like November 15th, try to have it done two weeks beforehand. Try to have it done by November 1st and use your summer effectively to plan those out. Make a notion table, like any notion table that you could think of um, for each school, make a tracker, for each date. So set your own deadlines for each school. Don't go by the school's uh, actual deadline because sometimes things will get messed up at the last second. Maybe you know you have something else to add. So if you were finished before the actual deadline by a good bit, then you'll be safe because you can always change it before you submit it the final time. So just make a table or an Excel sheet uh, with the name of each school, when you should get your essays done by and when the actual application date is due. Also, Start your essays now because you're going to rewrite them a lot. Probably there's going to be times, there's going to be nights where you'll get an idea for your essay and you're like, yo, this is, this is a good idea. And then you'll want to just get up straight away and then edit your essay. Um, and honestly, you should probably do it. Like when you get a new idea for your essay, don't like hold on to it because you'll probably lose the nuance of the idea that you already had. So if you get a new idea for an essay, just go away straight away and edit the essay and change it to what you think it should be. Next, you should get people to edit over your essay, but, but this is very important. Try not to make it so that you lose your own voice because you do have to portray your own voice through your essays. You have to make sure that what you're saying is, you know, really representing you. And if you get it too edited or too, um, you know, pish posh or too polished, then it's going to look a little bit weird. Um, and by too posh, I don't mean like make it a poor writing but make it really nice writing, make the writing polished, but make sure that the polished version of the essay is still representing you and it's not your friend's words or your parent's words or your counselor's words. Make sure it's at the end of the day, it's your words and it's representing who you are. In terms of other aspects of your application, let's talk about something that, you know, is a little bit shrouded in mystery, um, your letters of recommendation. Make sure that your letters of recommendation, people, the teachers that you're asking, um, if you're applying to like MIT or Caltech or some other schools, I think you need one uh, STEM teacher and one humanities teacher. So make sure you know who those are like well in advance. You, and you know, it'd be best if you ask them like the spring of your junior year, but otherwise ask them right now, <laughs> ask them before you start your fall year, because there's going to be a lot of teachers um, that have a lot of students asking them for letters of recommendation and it's best to give them as much of a head start as possible. And when you do ask your teachers for a letter of recommendation, don't just ask them for the letter of recommendation, send them like uh, a brag sheet is what it's called. Uh, and it's basically just a list of your achievements, a little bit about yourself, 
what you do outside of school, so that your teacher has a clear view of who you are as a person outside of the classroom, and so they know your achievements and are able to incorporate that in their letter of recommendation. Make sure that you're presenting the best case possible for yourself when your teacher is writing your letter of recommendation, because again, you know, unless you're really great uh, friends with your teacher, uh, which not a lot of people are, then you're not going to be able to, then they're not going to know the most about you outside of their classroom. And you're going to have to submit supplementary materials outside of what they know about you um, to actually make sure that their like a letter of recommendation highlights you in the best possible way. And of course, um, periodically check in on your teachers um, to see how they're doing with your letter of recommendation, but also don't be too nosy because they will get annoyed and you know, they have a lot of other things to do. They actually have to teach classes and plan classes and their only job is not to write your letters of recommendation. So, you know, if it is approaching the deadline and you're like, yeah, uh oh, why hasn't my letter of recommendation been submitted on the Common App yet? Then reach out to your teacher um, and ask them, hey, um, how's the progress on the letter coming along? And you know, some teachers are procrastinators just like most of us students are. So everybody's human, everybody procrastinates. It'll be fine, your teacher will get them in on time. Don't stress too much, just ask your teacher, send in your black sheet and you'll be good. Going back to talking about essays, because at the end of the day, they do end up kind of being the most important part of your application or the part of your application that you have the most control over in this period when you're actually filling out your application. Because your extracurriculars, pretty much set in stone, your awards, pretty much set in stone, your grades, I mean, obviously, that's just being normally at school, you know, just fixing your normal school tasks, your grades. So the only thing you really have a lot of control over at this point are your essays and how you present yourself through your essays. So one thing that I really wish I did was spend a lot more time on my essays. Uh, I kind of zoomed through some of my essays, um, especially towards the regular decision part of things. And I don't know if, I don't know, maybe if I spent a little bit more time, I would have gotten into some more schools. But at the end of the day, do you only spend as much time as you think it is worth for each certain school? Also, early decision versus early decision, early action versus regular decision uh, essays. How should you be pacing yourself? Well, what I did was for all my early action and early decision schools, I mostly finished them uh, all before like a month, uh, a month before my last one was due. So I think I finished them all around like October 15th to 16th and my last one was due about November 15th. And that really helped me a lot because that gave me a little bit more time to work on my regular decision essays. Um, and I started those as soon as I finished my early action. Uh, and I think my breakdown for schools that I applied to were 11 early action and seven regular decision. Um, and the regular decision schools, it was really nice because I had a little bit more time to work on my essays and I could spend more time looking over them. And another thing to note is that when you're writing like a lot of essays for your early action schools, and I recommend you apply to a lot of early action schools and don't do early decision unless you're like completely set upon going to like one school and you're hundred percent sure that's the school for you. then obviously apply to early decision and you know, best of luck. But if you apply to a lot of schools early action, then you'll be exposed to a lot of different prompts. And a lot of those prompts can end up being reused in some way um, when you're working on essays for your regular decision schools. So you should do that. I was able to reuse some of the prompts from my early action schools for other early action schools, as well as for some regular decision schools. Because you know, there's only really so many types of questions that colleges can ask you. They can ask you to you know tie in some extracurricular to some character trait that you have or they could talk about some experience that you've had that helped you grow, blah, 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 the why us essay, a lot of different things. Another thing I should mention is that for why us essays, you should probably do quite a bit of research because simple, um, you know, simple explanations won't cut it. You're gonna have to be a little bit deeper as into why you wanna go to a certain school. And while you're writing the why us essay, you'll probably find some cool things about the school that'll make you wanna go more, or you'll find some things that are like, Maybe this really isn't the school for me. And at that point, you might just drop it from your application. But that's really all the tips I have. Thank you for listening to me ramble. If you did listen to me ramble all the way up to here and you enjoyed something and you actually got something out of what I said, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment with any questions you have, join my Discord server if you want to ask any more questions or just DM me on Twitter or on Instagram. Links in the description down below. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.